Hello? All right, good. So um, I have been programming for years and years and years. And as Jeff Kazmier mentioned the other day, I am older than GitHub. <laughs> so my first, my first commit to Spree predates GitHub. That's how old Spree is. Um, OK, we can turn the lights down a smidge. All right, good. So I'm here to talk about, well, the, the slides uh, says behind the best storefronts. That's the tagline for our company. Um, the idea is that we ha have a uh, technology that empowers and kind of takes a, a supporting role um, behind the best storefronts. But that's our tagline. Um, I want to talk more about, so that's the marketing, but I want to talk more about our vision for the company and what, and for the project um, and uh, what that means for you guys. Hold on, we're going to test. My remote. There we go. OK, um, you can follow me on Twitter at uberzealot. Um, I only talk about Spree, so, and I don't really complain on Twitter. Like, so whatever. If you like hearing about Spree, that's what you're going to get if you follow me on Twitter. I do not look like this. <laughs> <laughs> so people, I've, a couple of people have mentioned to me, they say, you don't look anything like your uh, your gravatar or whatever. So that is a picture of me. It was a while ago. I had less gray hair then. It's, it, uh, it's not doctored at all, but it's a little fuzzy. It's, just, it's whatever. It's optimal conditions. I don't, re I don't really look like that. <laughs> this is what I look like. <laughs> um, so all right. Uh, the other day, uh, yesterday here at the conference, I was talking to somebody, and uh, I said something, pro you know, something a little too candid, I think. And then uh, the guy said to me, "I love your transparency." <laughs> so, um, for better or worse, uh, you know, I'm a transparent person. I'm pretty open. I just like to uh, uh, tell you guys what I'm thinking. So, um, if I say something uh, uh, a little um, un-CEO-ish. Uh, We'll chalk it up to transparency, OK? But I think transparency is important. Um, transparency is important for our project. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to embrace uh, my transparency. I'm also not crazy, OK? So um, like Andy said the other day, uh, good ideas seem really crazy at first, along with crazy ideas. So um, you know, uh, when I first started working on Spree, uh, a lot of people thought I was crazy, and you know, first free conf, I remember um, waiting for people to show up and like, is anybody even gonna come? And and, and while we have a low turnout right now at this moment, this morning, because of the uh, happy hour, I'd like to sabotage my talks by scheduling <laughs> open-ended happy hours <laughs> and, and then speaking at eight. Um, but anyways, when the first, I was just very relieved. I mean, I always thought that I wasn't crazy, uh, but I was relieved when the first person showed up at uh, SpreeConf, or even the first person bought a ticket at Sp for SpreeConf. It would be P Peter Birkenbosch, who, uh, where's Peter? Here. There he is, Peter. All right, Peter. First, so now he's an employee of Spree, but at the time he wasn't an employee, and uh, so it's like, all right, you know, uh, it was just a relief to realize that I was I wasn't crazy. <laughs> Um, and then welcome back, by the way, speaking of the first SpreeConf. So uh, how many people were at the first, the first SpreeConf? Yeah, there's like a bunch of, yeah. And there, there are several people here who've been to all four, including the one in Dublin, Ireland. Yeah, OK. <laughs> so, like, such as Jeff Squires. <laughs> all right, here. So our first conference was in uh, February 2012. Um, and there I am uh, talking about Spree. And here in our fourth conference course here at SVA Theater. And how's the Wi-Fi? Yeah. That was the last free conf. That's me setting up the Wi-Fi for the last free conf. So I had nothing to do with the Wi-Fi this time. And hence, <laughs> well, look, I mean, I'm not a networking guy. <laughs> uh, no, look, so we, you know, look, this is, where, this is what the $5 million in venture funding gets you, right? You can pay somebody to install proper Wi-Fi. So anyways, we went to, we, 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 uh, we sprung for the Wi-Fi this time, so okay. We're very happy with that. Anybody here from Cuba? Yes, I know you guys are here from Cuba. So uh, this is our first time having people from Cuba. Like, so um, welcome. And uh, you know, for the people who missed, uh, well, actually, the, your lightning talk is today, right? Yes. OK, these guys have escaped Cuba um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> to come here to deliver a lightning talk. So <laughs> you know. Check it out, right? So um, uh, just as a note, if you have friends in other countries who require visas to come here, actually, they didn't escape Cuba. They, we got a visa for them. So 
Uh, and I think it works two ways. Like now that we've, there's like an academic exchange thing. So I think I might be able to go to Cuba now that I've had somebody from Cuba come here. So I may take advantage of that. Any PHP developers here? All right, all right. You're in a safe place. Just <laughs> now, you don't have to go back. Just like the Cubans don't have to go if they don't want to go back, okay? <laughs> all is forgiven, you're here. So anyways, now welcome PHP developers. All right, so I want to talk a lot today about momentum. So this is a word that uh, has been coming up a lot when I talk to people. In fact, the most common word, the, the slide said announcements at first, but then I changed it to momentum because it sounds cooler. And that's what, um, that's the word that everybody's been saying back to me, like, wow, it feels like there's a lot of momentum around the project right now and around the company. So, uh, and there is. So there are a lot of good, um, milestones and uh, good momentum to report to you guys. So I just uh, want to get a little bit of help with my talk to make sure uh, it's going over well. So there's a couple of points in the, the talk where you guys are supposed to applaud, OK? And what not yet, not yet. But the, the cue will be when you see an animated. OK, let's practice. <laughs> All right, so if you see, very good, very good, OK. So if you see an animated GIF with people clapping, that will be your cue, OK, to celebrate. And then. I'm going to ask you to clap even if you don't know what it means, and then I'll explain why that was justified after you clap, okay? All right, Spree 2.2 released. Yeah. So, uh, well, for those of you who were here yesterday, you saw that released on the stage, and thanks to our Wi-Fi, that was possible. Um, so major adjustments to refactoring. Uh, talks are going to be available online afterwards, so this was a really big... Thing. We were never happy with adjustments since, since Spree was created. And it's not that Spree uh, is bad adjustments. It's just a very tricky problem to do. It's, it's really easy to model just one particular person's uh, requirements for adjustments. But to do something that's going to be generally useful for you know, thousands of people and, and not get in your way, that, that took us a long time to figure out. And uh, so we finally done that. The caching improvements, so uh, much faster, of course, and always we sport the latest Rails and Ruby. GoDaddy partnership. All right. So, um, you know, I want to talk a little bit about that. So it's a little bit, you know, as GoDaddy mentioned when they were here yesterday, it's a, it's a different company. They have a different CEO. They're, they're no longer, uh, you know, they've, they know they've screwed up in the past. So, um, and they're really embracing open source. And so look, when GoDaddy comes to us and says, hey, we'd like to partner, the way I look at it is just as if a contributor says, I want to contribute, right? So they just have lots of contributors, uh, potential contributors. So this is good for us. Um, uh, particularly, you know, I imagine with thousands of stores be running on Spree, they're going to care about uh, performance and scalability. And so as you know, we've already taken big steps on that front. but. Um, there's, you know, now we've got a lot more resources on that, right? Um, there's going to be thousands of additional spree stores. There's going to be more contributions to open source core. And uh, GoDaddy in particular is focused on multi-tenancy. So people who are trying to build marketplaces, it, we just get a lot of uh, talk about, hey, how do I, um, you know, host multiple spree stores on one server, that kind of thing. Like, this is an area where uh, GoDaddy will probably be helping. I was also really interested in the Angular stuff they were talking about the other day. So we'll be pressuring them to make that open source too. Spree editions and multi-store. So, so yeah, so this is one of those ones where nobody knows what that means yet, so I'm going to explain it. But, so thank you for clapping. Um, so multiple stores on a single server. Um, so the scenario here is like, uh, a, an ideal scenario here for this is like, well, uh, for, these are for larger companies in particular, where we have a, um, <clears throat> an Italian version of the site and a French version of the site, German version of the site. An Australian version of the site. You know, in Australia, it's totally different season down there, right? It's warm, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's warm down there. So uh, everything is different down in Australia, as they like to point out. Um, so you probably don't want to sell winter clothes, you know, in summertime, et cetera. So, like, the idea of having different collections, different clothes, different prices, different currencies, different languages, depending on the sites, this is all really important. So we developed some really cool technology around that. In fact, one of our customers was uh, taking us to task for not making it open source yet. So they were like, hey, we got on the board. This is a big customer. We, we got on board because we wanted open source. We're like, you're right. So uh, one of them is open source now, which is pre-shared, right, Brian? That's right. 
So the Spree shared one is uh, open source. So this is like the technology that we use to host the sandboxes on Spree. So we have thousands of Spree stores all running on one um, server, and uh, they use the Postgres apartment. So the GoDaddy solution yesterday they were talking about with MySQL. Uh, we use Postgres schemas um, and the apartment gem. So that solution is all open source, and the stuff with the uh, with the additions, which is where you can have a Japanese version of the site and an English version of the site and different products and different prices. That stuff is called Spree Editions, and it, we just have to clean it up. There's some just there's just some stuff in there you don't need, and we're updating it. So, but that will be also open source. So more open source. All right, new five million dollar investment. So the the downside is that we spent all of it on this. So I don't know if you've seen the Empire State Building, but it's in Spree colors. And yeah, so we're going to have a Kickstarter. We're going to need about five million bucks. <laughs> no, but it's just a happy coincidence. Yeah, there's one of our investors is here, so that was a joke. We did not spend it all. <laughs> so uh, OK, but this is what we are going to spend it on. I mean, some of what we're going to spend it on. Is, so just continued investment in open source. So one of the first things we did the, with the first round of money we raised was to hire a full-time um, community manager uh, in Ryan. Um, and you know the number of commits since you know that I mean because we had all sorts of people who were offering to help and contribute to Spree, but all those contributions had to be reviewed and tested, and and uh, and then there was a lot of work to be written. So um, we hired Ryan Big, and the commits just went you know. So we were able to harness all of that. We have about two or three people that work almost full time on the open source now, uh, in addition to just all of us that volunteer. I still do a little bit of it myself. Um, of course, the salary, the development of the Spree Commerce Hub, and um, our new investors have significant e-commerce ex uh, expertise too. I think that should be noted. So uh, uh, Thrive Capital, they're kind of secretive about their investments, so I don't know which ones I can talk about. But, but one of them uh, they're public on is Warby Parker, and Warby Parker is a huge um, uh, e-commerce brand as well. Uh, of course, Andy Dunn from Bonobos was here. He's, he's, an, he's an investor as well and a customer. Um, and, uh, and then Tony Shea from Zappos, you may have heard of that company. So they are, you know, pretty much, the, you know, they're the third biggest e-commerce company ever. So, um, so anyways, we have, so this is great. This is great for Spree. We have more e-commerce expertise. I'm wearing Zappos shoes right now and, uh, a Hue, Hue and Cry shirt right now. Hue and Cry here. Phil's on his way. Oh, Phil, I should just wear my Bonobo shirt. I wore that yesterday. And Combat Gen, I have my Combat Gen shirt for later. Um, and I'm wearing Tommy John undershirt, but I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to trust me on that. All right. Connect to any storefront. This is the last clapping gift. Let's just admire that for a second. <laughs> All right, so this is the Spree Commerce Hub, okay? Any version of Spree, I mean, uh, any custom storefront, any proprietary e-commerce platform, anything, you know, anything that talks JSON, which is any programming language, really, okay? So um, it was, you know, it's difficult. This solves a difficult problem with integration. I mean, it's difficult when you take e-commerce platform and make a customizations to it. I mean, whether it's Magento, whether it's Spree or whatever, you know, we could build the ultimate Magento connection but as soon as you connect it, a lot of people who have big Magento stores, Bonobos, you know, included for now, they're, they're moving to Spree. They, they just customize it to the point of where it doesn't resemble uh, the original, you know, infrastructure or the original code anymore. So even if we were to build some kind of ideal Magento connector, it would be hard to connect to any storefront, right? Because um, everybody customizes their stuff. The good stores are all kind of custom. So we've developed a way for you guys to push uh, JSON API to our hub, and um, we can build connectors to any integration. And it really just, it's just as hard to support an older version of Spree as it is to support Magento. So we've come up with a solution to support everything. So um, there's a lot to say on that. Brian had a talk on it yesterday. Um, we're happy to talk to you more about the hub. I'm going to talk about it a little bit more later, but this is a big deal for us. So um, anybody here who is on a platform other than Spree, um, you know, we can help you out with your integrations. So I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about what's coming next. Okay, so several of these things. Brian's going to talk a little more uh, detail about some of them, but uh, I just wanted to, to give a few highlights about what's coming next. So 
we're going to do a major refactor returns and exchanges. So this is probably like the final frontier for like Spree, the, like the last like unsatisfactory part of the software as far as I'm concerned. So it's, it's very difficult. I mean, there's a couple of big challenges in Spree uh, over the years. The first was uh, multiple shipping locations. Um, and we, we took care of that at the last reconf. conf um, People who want to ship from different stock locations and all of that. Uh, the adjustments were a bit of a mess, and so we're taking care of it here. And certainly by next pre conf and probably well before, we're going to have a much better uh, solution for returns and exchanges. So again, it's pretty easy to model you know, one person's um, returns and exchanges policy. But to make something that works for everybody is uh, quite difficult. Um, so we're still working on that problem, but we have to think of a pretty good solution, and I think uh, Ryan's could even show a little bit about it later. Uh, credits and group discounts. Again, these are things that you can do in Spree. It's fine. You can do all these things in Spree, and people have been doing them for years, but now we have a, uh, now we have a, a way to make it generally you know, applicable to everybody. So uh, that's coming. So hopefully people are excited about that. And integrations, lots and lots of integrations. So. Um, we're kind of taking a leap forward beyond the extension system. There still will be Spree extensions to do simple things, but the Spree Commerce Hub and this integration idea is, is going to uh, change the way people do integration with e-commerce. So uh, I get questions about this all the time. Um, this is the first question people ask after every time I talk, when, especially when we say that we've raised money. So um, we're 100% committed still to open source, okay? So that doesn't go anywhere. Um, the, uh, we, you know, I'm not gonna read these statistics, but okay, look, it's, we're big on open source and customers, uh, whether they're paid or open source customers, those people are contributors. So I think of customers as contributors. So, uh, these are just some of the ways in which, uh, our customers or partners are helping. So Bonobos, like they have been doing tons of, uh, commits to the core of Spree, um, so thank you for that. Surf Dome, they're another huge store. So they're a big store in the UK. They are as big or bigger than Bonobos in the UK. Um, they're very interested in the additions and multi-store, and they're going to be making a lot of contributions there. They were the ones that were saying, you got to make that open source. GoDaddy, um, I, they, they mentioned yesterday that they have a lot of ideas on improving the API uh, and performance. And uh, Ninefold, so Ninefold gave a really interesting talk yesterday about how, how fast Spree is. But the tools that they use to, um, to measure that and their, and their willingness to kind of help measure your site and uh, see how your, fast your site is performing, I think that's really cool. So they're open sourcing all those tools. There's more open source coming with the hub as well. So all of our integrations that we write, at least, will be open source. And we're encouraging other people to write it as well. So we're looking to take our open source credentials and just um, expand that into the in integration realm. All right. This guy is Dr. Vic. So you got recognize his book there in the background. He's a pretty cool guy. He uh, was an early angel investor, and uh, this is another person that people thought was crazy. He was an early investor in Zappos, um, and then he became their cultural king. Uh, so, but people who are, Zappos is famous for its culture. This is probably the single most. Uh, this is probably single person most responsible for that at Zappos, and so. Uh, we invited him to speak, so he couldn't be here today. Um, he requires a $25,000 speaking fee, <laughs> but that's not why he couldn't be here. He, he, used, to, he used to earn $25,000. He's retired from speaking. He lives in California, and it takes him three days to get here. So, but such a cool guy that he was like, I really feel bad. Even though I used to get paid to speak, I will pay you and uh, send a bunch of books and everything because I really enjoyed his talk, and I want to share some of his ideas. So he paid like six, eight thousand dollars out of his pocket for each of you guys to have a copy of his book. Um, so I don't know what is stranger that he got paid twenty five thousand dollars to talk about what he does, or that he has eight thousand extra dollars because he feels bad about um, talking. But anyways, David, uh, Dr. David Vick, he has in his talk. It's uh, we went to invest. Brian and I were at very early days after investment. He gave a talk on. Uh, vi he has vision and purpose, and this is the key to any successful company, and we want to sort of explain that to you as well. He said, all good companies have a vision and a purpose. So that's why our tagline is behind the best storefronts, but the vision is really about what we're trying to do. You know, I mean, so this is our vision internally as a company, but we wanted to share it with you. So the vision is what are we doing? This is how he describes in his book. Vision is about what we're doing. So Google's vision is in indexing the world's information. So that's their, their vision, and that tells the company, like, you know, how 
uh, how they make decisions, how to operate. It's just a guiding sort of principle of their company. So our vision is empowering the world sellers. Okay, our, we just believe in, in helping and empowering the world sellers. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about empowerment. Open source is all about empowering people, right? I mean, it gives you full control. You know, it saves you time, it's easy to customize. Fix your own bugs, hire security, AKA transparency. See, this is the transparency, you know, hey, source code's right there, you know, thousands of people are looking at it. It's transparent, you can see it, you can fix it. Uh, it also results in superior innovation. So I, I, like this from, uh, I like this from Jeff Kazmier yesterday that when he said that closed source is safe, you can keep your bugs around like pets. <laughs> So, uh, you know, we have a different way of looking at things. We want to empower you, fix your own bugs. So this was funny. Like, so when they announced our funding on Pando the other day, right next to it, NetSuite partners with Dell. CEO claims we're 10 years of everyone else now. So they have some kind of integration solution that you need not worry about. So, okay, challenge accepted, right? You guys are 10 years ahead, right? We'll see about that. So, um, I mean, how could we compete with this? This is from an e-commerce guru blog, or an no, ERP guru blog, uh, but this is like, ooh, the portlets have new drop-down menus. Okay, great. <laughs> Let's ask their customers what they think about it. So, um, you know, I, you know I, I agree with this, right? I mean, NetSuite solves a really, or they're trying to solve a really important problem, and they do a reasonably um, good job at it, but the execution's just so bad, right? And it's, just an, and it's a nightmare to integrate with. But let's ask with their partners, because maybe they have a better idea about it. It's like, yeah, they, um, they hate it, right? So we're all about building software that empowers people, that makes people not want to throw up when they use it, or integrate with it, or develop on it. And, you know, um, the message here is that friends don't let friends integrate with NetSuite. You know, they're trying to, you know, they're trying to solve an important problem, but they're executing poorly. You know, they do a reasonable job at accounting, and uh, in ERP kind of thing, and that's where they should just kind of stick, in my opinion. But, um, you know, try integrating with that. It's really difficult. So, I mean, I know because our developers, you know, complain daily about it because we're doing it for you. We're building the integration. This is what NetSuite integration looks like in my mind. So I haven't looked or read their documentation yet, but this is what they mean by being 10 years ahead, right? But this is really, they're about 10 years behind. Um, yeah they are gonna integrate with NetSuite, NetSuite, NetSuite. It's like NetSuite for your store, NetSuite for everything. So it'll, of course, that's not integration, right? That's not, this is how we look at integration. We look at integration differently. Notice the word NetSuite doesn't appear on there and even the word Spree doesn't appear on there. You know, it's a storefront and then you've got all these things that you need to connect to and the hub is there to help you connect. And so while NetSuite's great for accounting and an ERP, maybe you want to move to QuickBooks, maybe you want to move to whatever the, the next you know, great competitor in NetSuite's going to be. These things are interchangeable, the storefront's interchangeable, the hub is there to help you connect it all. So um, we don't see a big monolithic you know, stack as being the way of the future. We see it being more and more fragmented. You're going to be using more and more services to help power your e-commerce platform and we're going to be there to integrate it. So I just want to talk a couple minutes about how we win. So Spree Commerce, like the other day, uh, Ryan was saying, well, 50,000 lines of code, and everybody was like, ooh, that's a lot. Like, it's actually not a lot for what it does, and you'll see in a minute the alternative. But uh, 500 developers wrote it. So that's only 100 lines of code per developer, right? We have, we have I don't know, NetSuite maybe has 100 developers, I'm guessing, maybe, probably not even that much, 50. So we have 500 developers and only 50,000 50, lines of code. And actually, notice how the lines of code has actually gone down. Because software's gotten better, it's easier, it's, we've you know, figured out the more contributors, like the more efficient we are at writing it, the more, and the more we can also rely on third-party libraries. Rails has gotten better, so we don't have to do as much. This is how they lose, so this is Magento. You know, so, you know, while our developers only have 100 lines of code to maintain, they have a million lines of code each to maintain. So, uh, yeah, I mean, now this is Magento, it's not NetSuite, but you get the idea, right? This is what, because Magento is not really open source. That's kind of a lie. It is uh, open, well, there's two, there's two aspects to open source. There's open source uh, distribution, and there's open source, like, the community and the power of the movement of open source. So Magento has a couple of people, and five, actually, the first guy wrote, like, the first five million lines of code or whatever, their CTO doesn't work there anymore. Um, so. 
they write the code and they give it to you for free. That's just, that's just a sales model. That's not open source. I mean, you can modify it and stuff, but they're not participating in shaping the vision of the company so, or the software. So we believe as a, a true open source company that we can produce superior software and better products because you are helping us to build them. I mean, you don't have to be a coder to use our software, but there are, there are plenty of people uh, who are coders who use our software, and uh, they're making the software better every day. So empowering the world's sellers. So the last thing I want to talk about, uh, and this is, uh, is the purpose, so this is also important. Um, so at the, at the talk in San Francisco where Brian and I were there, um, you know, uh, Dr. Vick said, you know, it's just as important besides articulating your vision, it's just important to talk about your purpose, like, and for the company to know why it's doing what it's doing. And so uh, we wanted to kind of tell you a little bit about our purpose, what motivates us, because many of you have or will be making large large bets on Spree. And, you know, besides the, we're very proud of the technology. We feel like we're technically superior. You know, there's a purpose here um, that's also important. You should know why we're, we're doing what we do. So our purpose is we enjoy helping people and solving interesting problems. So we sat around as a company and discussed why are we doing this? You know, like we were really inspired by this talk. And I think, that, again, I recommend reading The Culture Seeker. It's very good. Um, why you know, why are we doing this? Why are we away from our families right now in New York and talking to you about Spree when we could be doing something else? And it's because we enjoy helping people and solving interesting problems. And I, I was looking at this last night. I was like, I, it was, I was struck by how helping people actually comes first. So, you know, we do like solving interesting problems. We're nerds. We like solving interesting problems. But uh, we also enjoy helping people. So I just want to share a couple of quotes with you, and then we can kind of talk about, take some questions about what's going on. So these are just, uh, these are probably, these are quotes that happened in the last week or so. So I just went through my inbox. And by, so if, if you have more quotes like this, send them to me, sean at spreecommerce.com. So I love reading them. And I share them with the team, and we feel really good about what we're doing. So um, yeah, I mean, we like getting the thank yous. Uh, this was a great one. This, uh, somebody sent me this the other day. I took the name out just because I didn't have permission to share it. But um, you know, I love reading stuff like this, right? Like, we take it very seriously. These are, this is your business. Like, you know, our hopes and dreams are tied up in street commerce, but, you know, most people here on, have their own companies or work, you know, for very small and, you know, have ownership stakes in their own companies, right? Whether you're a developer or a freelancer or um, you own your own store, you poured your heart and soul into this business, and we take that really seriously, and we feel really good about, about helping people. And this came from a guy who... Uh, went to our, let's see, third, our second SpreeConf. Um, he was one of our sponsors. So I, I like this. This is very unusual. He's, he, was, he was Swedish, so he, but anyways, he said it, you have to, he said in his Swedish sort of voice there, this is very unusual. Um, I thought that I understood what open source meant, but I did not really understand it until now. So a lot of people here are here for SpreeConf for the first time, and I get this comment a lot, like, wow, I really, you know, I totally get it. I didn't know what to expect. And so hopefully uh, over the course of a couple of days, you've learned more about open source, what we're about, and where we're headed. So I'm um, happy to take some questions now. John, thank you. Sure. Do you have a You're mentor welcome. with open source? Who do you model your, what's open source supposed to be? How is it supposed to get yeah. there? Could you talk about that? Sure. Um, a guy named Craig McClanahan uh, was an early mentor of mine. He was one of the, who's the creator of Struts, Apache Struts. Um, he worked on a bunch of Apache. So if there's any Java people here, he worked on Ant and Tomcat and a bunch of other projects there. So uh, yeah, I mean, everybody, so Apache in general, so Apache software, while it's Java focused, and so I'm not there that much anymore, um, it was always a welcoming like, place that just respected other people's ideas. It was always about, um, there was never any hating. In fact, when I first came on the rail scene, I was kind of just, rail scene used to be pretty like juvenile, and, um, and people used to kind of do a lot of trash talk, and so I learned a lot about 
I learned a lot at Apache. Those guys were just so smart. I mean, these are the guys who invented the Apache web server and, you know, and uh, so yeah, Apache Software Foundation, I think, was a big influence on me and then Craig McClanahan specifically. So there were just people who, uh, hey, I'm interested in helping. I will, I'm, you know, I'm interested in learning and the people who just kind of took me out of their wing and showed me the ropes. So we try to do that, you know, we try to, we try to do that in, um, in Spree as well. And it, and just not just in the company, not just in open source, but in the company in general. So, we tr you know, uh, that was a big influence for me. And um, so that's, that's a kind of open source project. So we don't tolerate, you know, trash talk and our threads or, you know, any kind of abuse. And, you know, we just kind of keep it positive and inclusive. Sure. Hi. Um, I have a question about Spree additions. Um, we're starting a Spree store, and our client basically said to us, they think that people in like Great Britain will be willing to pay more for the product than people in America, so it wouldn't be like a straight uh, currency. Exchange. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so that's that's. So no, this is not a straight currency thing okay. at all. And second and also, side, what's the timeline for that? Um, so it's it's been written. The problem is it's so it's 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 kind of like beta-ish um, software, but it's it's based on the Spree uh, shared uh, technology that we do use already to power all the. Sandbox stores when people sign up. So um, we're just—it just gets to clean it up. The biggest problem is we just—we we kind of sort of—we didn't make it as an extension. We kind of just—we just did it as a proof of concept and we bolted it into a Spree 1.3 store. So we just have to update it a little bit and release it. So, but it's yeah, it's um, you have a price book. So you have a price book and you can actually we did a we did as a little proof of concept for Gucci and they have all these different like price books across. Um, you know, like, so, hey, we want the European prices and we want North American prices, and they're like, oh, and then, then there's whatever. And then you could, so you can compose the site, like, hey, this subset of products, this price book, and then these currencies and these languages. And it's not, it's not all um, translated. It's really cool stuff. It's, so uh, we will be open sourcing it um, as soon as possible. So we just, we just couldn't. I just told Brian that we were open sourcing it this morning, so he's, <laughs> he's quickly <laughs> working on it for us. So he's already got the one up, and uh, we've just been so busy with everything else that I forgot to mention that we were, to him that we were open sourcing it. So, so we're almost there uh, cleaning it up for you. Yeah, he said one minute. <laughs> so yeah, and we're all going to be working on that together, and I think the Surf Don't guys are interested in contributing to that, right? Yeah, yeah, he's nodding. All right. So thank Joe if you, if you end up liking that. Um. <laughs> all right, what else? Uh, Sean, I want to echo uh, the sentiment of I love your transparency. All right, so great, thanks. Since you're being so transparent about NetSuite, uh, <laughs> can you give us any ideas or examples of other pieces of software that are doing it right, either from the end user standpoint or from the integration standpoint? Software, that's, oh, from the integration standpoint is, yeah, let's see. There are definitely people who are doing it right from the integration standpoint. Um, Surprisingly, the new version of QuickBooks Online is doing a pretty good job uh, from the integration standpoint. Like, you know what, the Ruby people are, tend to do it right. So like um, MailChimp, that, that's really easy to integrate. Like, ask what, other guy, what other integrations are easy to write? Mm -hmm. Not getting a lot of <laughs> feedback there. Um, so the shippers are doing it the worst. So the shipping and, and uh, logistics people, they're doing it the worst. Um, yeah, I think the more modern, uh, Zendesk. Zendesk is, is not too bad to integrate with, right? And so the thing we do beyond writing integrations, so even if everybody wrote really easy integrations, the key, or, you know, or really good APIs that were, and did it right, like, like with JSON and you know, good documentation and testing tools, um, even if everybody did it right with integration, you know, we provide a pretty valuable service. And if we orchestrate all those integrations and let them work together. So, but yeah, I, I have hope. The shipping people, I, I have not, I've had very little hope for, but what is interesting is that they're willing to write their own integrations. So they're written in these really weird, arcane systems, these backend things. And we've had some success in them um, writing their own integrations for us, like using our kind of standards. So, but yeah, I would say Zendesk is probably one of the best. Zendesk, uh, SendGrid, or not SendGrid, um, oh, Mandrill. Yeah, Mandrill is like a transactional email. They do a great job. So uh, does that answer your question? Okay, those are some examples of people. So yeah, I mean, there's plenty of people doing it right, and we, I'm, we only really harsh on, NetSuite's big enough to defend themselves. Like, I don't feel like, you know, you know we could take a couple digs at them. Let's do one, more one more question? All right. I'm around all conference, so if you have other questions later, we can talk later as well. Okay. Hey, Sean. Uh, hey, what's, what's your thoughts on uh, Zapier? Is this a uh, competition? Yeah, OK, great. Great question. So Zapier is, and there's another thing called like if this, then that. Um, like there's these very simple 
uh, integration services, um, those are fine. But you know, I find playing with them, it's just kind of weird. They just they don't do they're not that useful like by themselves in isolation. Um, so again, let me just tell you a scenario that I think uh, uh, drives that home. So Zap Zapier is just sort of like, hey, you're gonna take this and take this, and it's just gonna pump them between. So. It's very easy to write an integration that goes one direction and then doesn't have it, you know, but then what if something goes wrong? What do you want to do after that interaction happens? That's where things start to break down, right? So it's pretty easy to say, hey, when I get a new order, well, Zapier's not e-commerce oriented either, okay? So e-commerce is a whole set of problems that are really specific to e-commerce, right? So a scenario that we have that, that, um, that we model that's impossible in Zapier is, a, is like, okay, inventory is back ordered and we need to integrate with the shipper so that we, or we need to integrate with the warehouse. And we know when the warehouse has inventory, we need to tell Spree that the inventory is there. Then the order can, then the credit card can be charged. And once the card is charged, then we can send it to the shipper. And once the shipper acknowledges, then we can send an email. So it's like that sort of like chain. And if anything breaks down, we want to create a ticket in Zendesk and then, you know, also be able to retry it after we go in and fix the information. So the biggest difference, I think, is the level of complexity. Um, those things are, are kind of, I think they have, they're limited, pers they're kind of for personal use, like, oh, hey, when I get a, t when somebody mentions me on Twitter, I want to send a message to Twilio or something, but those are fun, but they're not really that, so I think it's a level of usefulness and sophistication as well as a focus on e-commerce that makes us different. Great question, though. All right. Okay, thank Thanks. you. Thanks.